Okay, this is the June 2014 paper, uh, question number one. Uh, this question is about tissues and cell structure, and uh, part A is the tissue uh, section. So you need to look at the diagrams uh, in this question. Uh, they're both of epithelial tissue, and uh, you need to state what type of epithelial the tissue is and uh, name a location within the body that it's found. So this first uh, diagram there, the cells are drawn as squares, um, so they're drawn uh, two-dimensional. In real life they would be uh, cube-shaped. Uh, so this first epithelial cell, okay, or tissue layer is the uh, cuboidal epithelium and uh, just out of uh, revision sake here uh, the line under the cells there that would represent the basement membrane on which uh, all cells of a tissue uh, rest so cuboidal uh, epithelium um, a good example of where these are found are in uh, the kidney where they actually form part of the kidney uh, tubules okay so that's the uh, cuboidal uh, tissue uh, if we move on to part two, this is a, a slightly different shaped cell within this tissue, um, but you've still got the basement membrane uh, down the bottom there with that line. Um, these cells now, they're, they're actually rectangular in shape, okay, so they are um, taller than they are wide. Uh, the other feature of these cells is on the top they have uh, little hairs which are called uh, cilia so this type of epithelial tissue will be ciliated columnar epithelium all right so they're columnar cells because they have this rectangular shape ciliated because of the cilia uh, on the top um, the most obvious location of these uh, this tissue uh, would be in the trachea Okay, where they, where they, the, these cells line the uh, the trachea. Okay, so I've typed in the answers there for this tissue type. Uh, the other uh, locations that the examiner would accept would be in the uh, fallopian tubes, um, or also known as the oviducts. So if we go on uh, to the next part, okay, uh, we have a. An electron microscope image here of a cell okay uh, if I just go through the particular parts before we look at the question uh, a there uh, that's going to be a mitochondrion okay um, again if you look at this structure here uh, that's very probably a mitochondrion as well uh, but it's been cut in a in a different plane all right, so it looks circular rather than uh, sausage shaped. Um, C um, would uh, be the nucleus there, and D would be the uh, nucleolus. Okay. Uh, the other things that you can see uh, in this image here, um, but there is uh, a nuclear pore. Okay, C also may be. Uh, point into a nuclear pore as well as the actual nuclear envelope. Um, other structures in here, this would be the endoplasmic reticulum, okay, which uh, sort of spans out uh, throughout the cell. So the question then is a table. You have to complete the table now. Um, for B and C, you need to state the function. And for D, you need to state the structure and then the function as well. Uh, so B, uh, collectively then, C and D uh, make up the nucleus. Okay. So the function of the nucleus is really, uh, it contains the DNA. Um, and DNA uh, provides the code uh, to make proteins, uh, which is done by protein synthesis. OK, uh, you could also put in there that uh, DNA replication occurs as well. So really, the nucleus is there to um, code for and control really protein uh, synthesis. Uh, C, uh, the examiner has actually told you it's a nuclear pore in this case. Uh, I think that's quite 
good because from the image there I don't know whether that really looks like a nuclear pore really okay but at least the examiner's told you that that's what it is so the function of that okay would be to allow uh, substances out of the nucleus um, but you must mention one uh, example of what can actually leave the nucleus via this nuclear pore um, the best answer would be uh, messenger RNA okay that comes out of the nucleus and goes to the ribosome for protein synthesis so that would be uh, transport of messenger RNA out of the nucleus okay don't say that it goes in because messenger RNA only comes out of the nucleus. Uh, D, um, I've already mentioned that, that would be the nucleolus, which is a dark staining region within the nucleus. Uh, the function of that would be uh, to produce or to synthesize ribosomes. So I typed in the answer there for uh, the table. Uh, if we move on to the next part of the question, uh, it's saying that the nucleus has pores in the envelope that surround it, whereas organelle A does not. Describe one other difference between the membranes that surround organelle A and those that surround the nucleus. Now, with any question that asks, that asks you to compare um, something, you must have comparative statements. Okay, so if we have a look at uh, organelle A uh, that is the mitochondrion okay so one major difference is that the mitochondrion has this highly folded uh, inner layer or inner membrane sorry okay which you can see there so to get the full mark for this you can say that uh, organelle A has a highly folded inner membrane but the nucleus does not have an inner membrane. Now that's what's known as a comparative statement uh, and that um, would get you the one mark. Okay, so there's the answer to part C typed in. Uh, part D then describe two differences between the ribosomes found in animal cells and those found in prokaryotic cells. Okay, so ribosomes that are found in animal cells will be attached to the uh, endoplasmic reticulum, uh, which makes up the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, uh, the other difference, of course, is the size of the ribosomes. Um, in animal cells, they're going to be larger, okay, or you could put 80S, okay, and uh, in prokaryotes, uh, they're smaller or they are 70s ribosomes so um, I've typed in the answer and again uh, you should see that I've made comparative statements so I've mentioned that the ribosomes are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum in animal cells and then I've said but not in prokaryotic cells so that would be one mark and then animal cells have large ribosomes but prokaryotic cells have small ribosomes okay so that's the end of question one.